getting almost settling in. Yes, Eric, absolutely have. I'll give it to you just one second. We got an intro. Good morning and aloha. Well, good ever, good whatever time it is, wherever you are, it's morning here. But anyway, let's get it started. It's gonna be a quick one. Aloha, everyone. Welcome to Let's Get Live. I am that dude, Doc Rock. Today, we're going to get into some new stuff that's happening in the Ecamm world. Uh, we got camera overlays now, and camera overlays are absolutely fun. They are the bee's knees, as I like to say. I am Doc Rock. If this is your first time here, drop in, say hello. Let us know where you're from so I can send you a shout out. Big ups to Kendra. Good to see you here this morning. Hello, Aaron. Let me answer Aaron's question right away because he had a tough one. He said, the other day I was trying to film a whiteboard on my desk without spending a used car's worth of money. Have you had any luck with those Wacom Intios things? Actually, I use a Wacom Intios uh, 12 by, I think it was 12 by 18 forever. Like, and yeah, that one's the close to $500 one, but the standard issue, basic Wacom works perfectly fine. Ever at this moment in time, and of course, the day you asked me that question is the day I didn't bring the iPad in the studio, but I just use iPad. Um, so with I know you're on a PC, so it's a little bit different, but with Ecamm, I can just plug the iPad in, the iPad shows up just with the standard cable. You will need to use a any tablet should work in theory. Um, most tablets will have the HDMI out and the reason why I say this is you figure like a um a generic Galaxy 10 ish tab I don't know what the proper word is now but in that range a Galaxy tab is going to be less than 200 and then the HDMI out adapter will probably set you back another 30 bucks and then you just plug it into your computer and it should work there's also really cool applications out there like um uh, reflector is one there's another one called aviator and they allow you to show your tablet on your computer via wi-fi slash uh, uh, ndi so ndi tools ndi tools tv or some sort of ndi you can normally the ndi app for a tablet is roughly 10 bucks and you can send that as a video signal to OBS, Streamlabs, OBS, Ecamm, Wirecast, BeLive, whatever, right? So most of these guys will accept an MDI source. And so as an MDI source, you can send it wirelessly. And then the stylus on the tablet is much easier than dealing with the Wacom. It's actually Wacom, but everyone says Wacom. But yeah, I take it back. It's Wacom. I just messed my own self up. Everyone says Wacom. It's Wacom. The reason why Wacom, Wa, as in Harmony, as in Japan, the original name for Japan was Wa, so it's Wacom. Japan computer, Wacom. Everyone says Wacom. I twisted myself. Anyway, let's see what's popping. Oh, you have an iPad. Yeah, you're good to go. So, yeah, you get to go. Uh, you either, either try NDI Tools, uh, which will let you make your iPad as a source or use the HDMI adapter out of the iPad, feed it into your PC using whatever you capture with on your PC. And seeing that you have a PC, you probably have a real deal capture card. Um, yeah, kind of sort of Christmas lights, bro, but they're basically, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're basically practical lights. That was the plan. <laughs> they're intended. Let me put June back and move him up. Yes, they are practical lights. I'm, I'm looking for some pops of color. Super irritating. So I go to Ben Franklin, to people in the in the mainland or the big part of the map that's known as House Mart, and I got purple lights and purple lights. Yo, they're two different color purple. 
that hurts. So the string back there, which is probably far more pink than purple, that is chilling on Mr. Vader, may or may not stay. I'm going to go back and look for more. Good news is it's Christmas season and finding these kind of lights are easy. But with a good lens and a nice bokeh, you can make pretty cool looking practical pops in the back. Wait, we forgot R2's light. Sorry, Mr. D2. I got you, player. There. There you go. Now R2 is properly illuminated. Um, Aaron, you know, EpoChem is a thing. Uh, I heard so many nightmares about how buggy and unstable it is. So I'm like, eh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I have never tried it, nor I want to. But in our community, the Ecom community, which is about 12,000 people deep, most of what I hear is e, uh, EpoChem and um, like bad words, which is funny because the majority of that community are pastoral. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if, if you want to try that or you, if you already have it, yeah, let me know how it goes because I've just heard nothing but nightmares about that. 999 Burks, good to see you here. So I have 50 subs and have 53, but it looks like five days. Is that good? Yes, you know, you know what? Um, Yes, here's why. You you have to sell it. This is crazy hard to say, uh, crazy hard to explain. You have to celebrate every tiny little victory, right? Now, those new three people, first of all, make sure that um, you, well, without a, two, a tool like TubeBuddy, you may not be able to see who they are. But, um, yeah, you want to just make sure you put out content that, that will, you know, make them feel good about what they've done. Because normally what will happen is they will go and drag someone else, you know, and they'll be like, you know, I found this person that's doing, you know, stuff on YouTube and I really enjoy their content. You should check it out. Whenever I find something cool on, on uh, YouTube, I'll share it with my friends. Or I'll share it with my family. Um, you know, if it's the kind of stuff they're into, sometimes I share with my family stuff that they're completely not into just because I thought it was dope. And I was like, I know you're not into this, but look how cool this is. You know what I mean? So there's, there's one way. And another way to really grow is doing what you're doing right now. Go to other people's content and get into the comments. If you have something valuable to offer, offer something valuable. Um, if there's a tip or a piece of advice or answer the question that the creator created, normally what happens, that level of community um, moving has a tendency to have other people go, you know what? I'm starting to have conversations with this person with a really sick avatar. So let me go check out their page. And then they see something that you have that they're into and they go, oh, I like this guy. And then you jump on and you just, you know, be part of it. Super funny. Like here's a prime example. Like uh, Aaron's here. Aaron's a PC guy, not even a Mac user, but he's a killer musician and musical tech guy. We have lived in the same island and probably have bumped into each other on myriad occasions, but I can't say that I've met Aaron. Hey, Aaron, this is Doc. Doc, this is Aaron. But we talk to each other all the time online, but literally live in the same spot, like less than 10 miles away from each other. As a matter of fact, at the music school he teaches at, I'm in that neighborhood every single week, three, four times a week. And But yet we talk a lot on the internet. So you know what I mean? Like you, you got to foster those sort of relationships. And yeah, it's in there. So I'm back to what Aaron said <laughs> anyway. And the fact that he rides bike and I ride bike too. I just find it funny. I guarantee you we have bumped into each other, mirrored cage, and probably even spoke and don't even know that I was Doc and he was Aaron. Anyway, you've been using the iPhone and showing people how to mic drums. Oh, sick. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, that, that portable camera thing, bruh, using um, the NDI tools for the iPhone and Filmic Pro Oh my goodness, what a sick combination. Now, recently, the guys from Filmic Pro were on another show that I frequent, and they, they came out with Filmic Pro Remote. So, like, I can run Filmic Pro on this iPhone using the NDI, running it to my, you know, switcher right here, and then I can use my, right here, iPhone 8 to control it, you know, from, like, a distance. So, it's kind of sick. And the number one thing I'm waiting on is next week, Friday, when they say, okay, Doc, you can finally order your stupid Humanganous iPhone 12 Pro Max with the HDR 10-bit video recording. Oh, my God. I'm just, I'm just, oh, my God. Um, 
Yo, hey, get it, get it, son, get it. Make sure you get the tire protection. Um, them run smart, I mean run smart, them run flat tires are crazy expensive. You catch a nail in one of them suckers on the 5 Series, it'll set you back like 7, 12 for a tire. So get the tire protection because it's only a little bit, and then if anything happens, it's covered. So make sure you do that. I just found there's a giant game streaming community here. Yeah, yeah, that's super crazy, right? Like I was, I'm absolutely amazed at the the guys from Hawaii that are on Twitch doing the gaming stuff. It's super crazy. David, good to see you here. Okay, before we actually, we're at the topic today is designing camera overlays. So uh, David had a question for me actually in the DM which is sort of on this level of designing for camera overlay. So we're going to jump into that. I wanted to, the guys that are here that are always here, you know, if you know anybody that needs to, to see this, make sure you do them and us a favor and press the like button now just to get the little juices flowing and then share it out with folks. If you're already subscribed, thanks. Um, Cause yeah, right now with the new camera overlay feature running into live today, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be dope. Like what? What? What do you mean? I explain that, Dean. By the way, the new avatar is quite swanky. Did I put a, a HTTP under? I don't know. Me don't know. Uh, yeah, explain that, Dean, because I'm unfamiliar. I always put. Sometimes I strip. Sometimes I don't. I I can never remember which is which. Are you talking about this one? That one there? It could be. Uh, which widget is what widget, Mr. Marcus? If you're talking about this, that is a Final Cut. I made it in Final Cut. And then I saved it as an Alpha ProRes 4444. Four, four, four. Last four is very important. And it, it just pops in on the screen, comes and goes as whatever. Now, what I did to make it kind of quite fancified is I then attach the sound to the scene, and then with the scene, sound in the scene, it comes off as if it's a transparent movie with sound, but it's not, it's just regular. Okay, so Dean, out of pure curiosity, uh, why do you say that? <laughs> I'm just curious. Um, yeah, because first of all, this is a, uh, a rebranded link, so nothing much anyone can do to it other than send clicks to rebrandly, but re rebrandly being a fully gated service like bit.ly or what used to be the Google shortener. It's basically, it's basically just going to, um, defer that link to Ecamm's site. So there's a protection thing in the middle. But yeah, there put it whether you put the S or the not S, it's sort of irrelevant. Like it shouldn't do anything. And as a matter of fact, when I go to any site where there might be a purchase, which Ecamm, that link resolves to uh Ecamm affiliate. So someone might at that point say, Hey, I want to purchase, I always start them with HTTPS. But yeah, there should be no reason why putting HTTPS on the stream is bad. And somebody told you that is probably not quite familiar with the way servers work anyway. That's funny. Yobo over the top. I like that. Um, not sure who that is, but I like it. Nice hair, June, by the way. <laughs> okay, so to David's point, we're going to talk about doing the camera overlays. I am going to start with the freshy fresh scene. Okay. Um, let me go into the live demo mode. This guys, you can see is the way Ecamm is flushy flush and does what it does. Um, this is my setup. I love checking out the way people do their layouts. Cause this is my layout. I don't even know if I like it, but I just use it. And I, this is what I come up with. You can adjust these layouts any way you want. So yours might look different, but I'm always creeping on other people's layout to get a better design. I forgot exactly who I stole the giant comment region from, but I love it because normally it starts out like this. And I don't know if you guys know this, I'm blind. So by doing this, it gets bigger, it grows, and then I can see 
everything. So that's how I like to do it. So anyway, how I like to start scenes is I like to start with a blank. I'm going to show you guys the way of going here to the top, pressing under source. Marcus, I hope you are paying attention to every bit of this because this, this counts for you. Um, I'm going to go to blank source. I always start with blank source. Not everybody does, but that's them. I, I'm Doc, I start with a blank source because it's just easy. If you ask me, my opinion, you do what works for you. Just do what I say, damn it. Boom, blank source. Okay, I'm going to remove my frame for a second. Okay, so all we got is a blank source. Then, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a camera overlay. I have no idea what my Mac decided they wanted to do just now, but that's okay. Press this third icon from the bottom of the overlay window. If your overlay window is missing, you got to come over here and go under window and pull up overlay. It's command J, right? So it'll be there. If it's missing, pop it up, right? Okay. Press the camera. Boom. You get yourself a camera. At this point, you have to decide how you are going to divide your window up. Let's just say. Okay. So to David's point, he's going to have himself and I think he said four other guests, right? So what you would do quite possibly is I press the option key. You guys hear that? I hold the option key and then drag the window to create my second. And then what I'm going to do here, double click on that. And instead of cam link, I'm going to say guest one. Okay. Right now I don't have a guest one. They're in there, but trust you me, if the guest was there, it's full size. You could also change any of the formats as to how you want it. But let's just stick with this 16 by 9 for right now. So I'm going to put that there myself. And then I'm going to put guest one right here. And then I'm going to grab the next one. Or you can, again, just to show you, it can be done either way. Double click that and then go to guest two. Okay. That's really weird that guest one came in small and guest two did not. That is odd. So I'll just delete that and delete that and do it again because who knows sometimes things are weird like that go to guess one yeah that's so weird <laughs> i don't know why it wants to do that but anyway that's how you would do it let me check here if i accidentally move put pad and scan on guess one playing with somebody set up the other day so if i come here to guess one yes i did zoom and pan is on there you go so you can turn that off Anyway, so I can throw the guests wherever you want to put them. Um, you might have to size them down a little bit, but it's basically simple just by you. This is using the camera overlay way, right, David? So you can add more, but we're going to start with these. And then that thingy right there is kind of sort of in my way, but let me zoom it up with my mouse. Come on, player. Yeah, like that. Okay, and then now what I need to do is, I wonder if it let me grab more than one. No, it won't. I will just grab this. Hey, <laughs> that's funny when I did that. Grab, hey, stop doing that. What it's doing is this window right here is, is in the way. It's an overlay. Um, what I can temporarily do is turn off that overlay, which I kind of don't want to do, but I'll do it just for this. So pull it down the next one, and then... Go and pull it away. The next one. Yeah, it could be. It doesn't matter because you could change this person right here. David, you could change it to guess three. You know what I mean? And then you could take this one and change it to guess four. Right. And then this one would be Skype. So you could add it to guess five. Right. So it doesn't matter whether you're on the camera, if you're producing. You know what I mean? So, yeah. The way you selected these now to your question of like, how do you remember these type of scenes? What I would do is take this first scene that I have, make a copy of it, rearrange the heads, you know, as necessary, and then save that as, you know, 
uh, guest one is the prominent speaker. If you know who those guests are going to be, you can pre-assign the guests to a spot, okay? So in interview mode over here, right now it says guest one, guest three, guest four. But yesterday, if you look at the demo from yesterday that's on the Ecamm community, it actually says Alex, Chris, Lemwell, and um, wait, who's the last person that called me? <laughs> wait, I think it was just those three. No, we had another person that called me. I forgot. <gasps> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, so you can have it. Their names will show up, right? So also, when you're here in your interview mode, you can assign the people that come in, you can assign them to a slot, right? So like I could design, when you come in, I can assign you to guest four, Fran Tarkington. I can assign you to guest four. So whenever I press one of my overlays instead it'll say guest four. I don't or I, me personally, I would rename my overlay to say David. You know what I mean? And and not the overlay, sorry. I would rename the scene whereas you're the prominent person. So number one, you can add as many cameras as you want. Um say this camera that's me, it could be the score, right? You could take the iPad or another computer set that up as the score or the live feed from the video or something of that nature. And then you could kind of like make that the more prominent one. And like that would be coming in. And then here's your, your pontificators on the side. You got a logo area over here. You know what I'm saying? So that, that'll make it like simple. Now, just to show that you can add a Skypey. Please don't break this. The last time we did this, Skype decided they wanted to break something. <laughs> so I'm going to try this. This is new. I didn't try this before. So if it breaks, blame David. Yes, 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 Mother Humper, yes. We have victory. Bow beneath me, you wimpy Ecamm program. I take it back. Don't tell the kids I said that. <laughs> so yes, you can do something just like that. Um, I, I'm sorry, I can't help it when I start tweaking things like that. Um, so here, here's basically how you would set up something of that nature. You would have your your four pontificators plus the person that came in on Skype. This could be the live feed, the actual video, or the score, or the game board, or like me, like the. The the design capabilities are now and freaking less. Okay. So we were talking yesterday using around the horn as a concept piece, right? If we were doing, say, an around the horn type situation, I'm gonna design it differently. I don't want to get in trouble from uh from ESPN, I just realized that this is my title safe that I'm working in. You, I actually have more space. You can go up into the corners. And I always forget that. So that's one of the disadvantages of using a blank. So maybe what I would do, generate a graph. A, uh. Hey guys, welcome to the show. It's Tuesday. Generate a grid. Go into Keynote or Illustrator, download one from the internet, whatever. Go and get a 16 by 9 grid. Use that background graphic first. Then lay all this stuff on top so you have place and you can see where you're putting these things instead of randomly guessing. Uh, good idea. Maybe I should just make a grid and issue it to you guys. But I can show you quick and Z. If I open the keynotes. Boom, buckled. Boom, buckled. Shoot the bone to fire, man. Hold on. One question at a time, David. Uh, let's see. Damn, Viking fans are so... Oh, je ne sais quoi. <laughs> Problematic. I see it's problematic. <laughs> Sorry. I'm I'm tripping today. It's Tuesday. All right, let me line this up here. Move this out the way. Skype, I know you are a pain in the butt. Don't do anything dumb while I'm trying to show folks how to do this here. All right, so I'm going to take... This, I'm going to click it right now. It's showing the edge. I'm going to duplicate that scene. Boom. And I'm going to call this one Keynote. And then I'm going to take this here. And ooh, there we go. Not primary display player, Keynote. And then zoom the app window. Bye. -ya. There we go. 
So can I back out? Nope, keynote wants to be just a little bit smaller. I wish it was a little bit smaller. There you go. And then grab this side and bring it in. Okay, so this is my little keynote like idea. I have a grid that I made here in keynote, right? Uh, I might make this a little bit tighter for what we're trying to do. Like right now, there's a 12 column grid. I would literally just take, you know, the grid lines and split the difference in here and just double up my grid, you know, all the way down. Uh, that's off. It's off. There you go. 400. I, I kind of know the math because I made this, but, uh, you know, your math may vary. There we go. No, 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 no. There you go. And then, yeah, so I would do something like this. 940, 940, 940. Come on, girl. There you go. Save that. Throw this in. <laughs> Thank you, Keisha, for finishing my stupid song. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would do something like this and then save that, you know, as a, as a PNG or, you know, JPEG or whatever. I would throw that as the background, design my scenes so you're getting things in the sort of the right place, Okay. So that, that sort of helps that. Okay. And just let me zoomify this real quick. So you guys can see all I did here in keynote was I took a standard black screen and I put the grid lines in place first. And then I took shape element, which is a square. And then, you know, start here, pull it all the way down to 1080. And over here is okay. If you go past a little bit, but, um, yeah, so what I did was took the 12 columns of uh, 1920 by 1080, 12. You can do 16 column grid, 12 column grid, six column grid, three column grids. It's a weird thing. It's a, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to describe, but there's a, like a Fibonacci type thing on how people perceive things in grid oriented. So for designers, we use these, grids just go look up grid layout systems if you want to brain hurt for a second but then learn how to do something really cool go check out grid systems for design and then that will help you so all i did was grab these two and then i just kept um re repeaticating them all the way across the screen hey stop that and then once i repeaticated them across the screen i just turned their opacity down to where they're roundabout invisible and yeah that was how i designed my little grid right turn my opacity down just enough so i can see what's there but i use that as a design mechanism in order to help me see there's a bunch of ways to do it as a matter of fact i'm pretty positive you can just search the internets and download a keynote 16 column grid or a canva 16 column grid this is a 12 column grid i should say the right word um yes just kind of up to you the reason why i went 12 1920 by 1080 works with 12 right another resolution might work better with 16 as a matter of fact it should work with 16 because well it's 16 by 9 duh so in theory a 16 column grid should work because it's 16 by nine. You just take the 1920 divided by 16, use that number, build your grid. You know, super simple. In my in my uh, mini miniature brain power, that's how you would line it up. So going back to this scene here, um, yeah, you basically line that up. Now let me check questions real quick because Mark Keith said they can use the link not come in via video, but use their audio to ask questions. Yes, you have, you completely have the ability to have someone come on and ask a question by audio only. Um, what I would do in that particular case, I would make a, how, how would I do that? I was thinking I would just make a dummy head like this and then be like, you know, uh, MK from Tennessee calling in and, but nah, that's kludgy. I say, yeah, you could do it, but I'll use the roadcaster <laughs> for that. Cause I have a ability to accept a phone call. I'll be like, call this Google voice number and I'll just bring you in through the roadcaster. That would be a little bit simpler, I guess. The problem is, I don't know why I just did that. 
guests aren't going to be smart enough to make, or if you have a technically kind guest, they know how to take a picture and supplement a camera for a picture using an app like Cam Twist. Um, but, you know, if I was having my sister on as a guest, she wouldn't know how to do that. So, yeah, that's a tough one. I, the only other thing I could think of is maybe you bring them on and using camera effects, you basically load the dummy image in the green screen box and then take their camera and basically uh, turn it all the way down. Yeah. I know that's a tough one. Why you always got to come up with crazy stuff, Marquis? <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, we got a boss. Boom, buckle out. <laughs> thank you. Hey, hey, Katie. How you doing? Good to see you here. Katie is here in her Katie capacity, not in her Ecamm capacity. <laughs> nice. Good to see you here, Katie. Are you holding the puppy in that picture? Very cool. So, David, in theory... You can easily set your stuff up. Um, yeah. You know, I, I got I got what you're trying to do, Marquise. I know you just want to have them as audio only with no picture, but I don't think it is that easy because, oh, I know what you do. Try this. This might work. Um, let me go to guesticate myself. Boom. Refresh. I got it. I got it. This is how we're going to try this, Marquise. We're going to go to Mac Edge. Oh, it's a chicken. Oh, we need time to cook that sucker. Go like this, Marquise. Take the camera and oh, when you come in here and this is brand new, right now it knows that I want to use my camera. But what I would do is don't give it the juice for the camera. Only give it the juice for the audio. And then it would work, right? So you got to explain this to your guests. When they come to Chrome or Safari or Edge or Firefox or whatever, when it asks for permissions, what they want to have, the camera and the mic tell them to not select their camera. Okay? If, for some reason, they say, well, I don't know how to do that. Take a piece of paper like this. Put it on the camera. It's a post-it note. And then select face. Oh, <laughs> post-it note doesn't stick though. Okay, rubbing it for a second. Stay there, post-it note. Select FaceTime camera with the post-it note on the way. And then that'll still work too. So, yeah, that, I mean, you can do it. It just requires a little bit of thinking, right? So if they're on a PC, just tell them they don't want their camera on, tape the camera, select their audio source continue to march a smart person would put a photo in the place of the camera um and what i mean by that because it's going to sound funny but let me show you i'll show you how my favorite one that does this it cracks me up but um pod save america and then go to their YouTube page. Dun, 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 dun. Videos, 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 videos. Uh, YouTube. I'm going to skip their first page right here. Hey, hey, shh, be, be quiet, John. Go to Crooked Meads. They did this a while ago and then they changed it. But back when they did it in the beginning, I thought it was super, super funny. I'm going to have to go to older videos. They took one of those um, restaurant, like today's special boards, and a plastic bake light phone. Right. And they pointed the camera to that and they said on the call coming from some place was the person's name on the restaurant board. And it was right next to the Bakelite phone. Man, they made a lot of videos. Oh, here we go. This is a right there. That's what I'm talking about. I thought this was great. I'm going to make the volume me down so that we don't get in trouble. And bam, to me, one of the dopest representation of guest but I don't want to see the guest face. So in theory, you can make this in, um, you can make this in keynote, Photoshop, whatever. Okay. And then, so I'm going to steal this. Nobody say nothing. Okay. Do not call Dan Pfeiffer and get me in trouble. I'm going to make a little picture of here. Okay. On the phone, 
Dan Pfeiffer. Okay, got it. All right, boom. Now we go go back to this scene right here, and then so say guest number four is Dan Pfeiffer, right? I'm gonna take Dan and I'm gonna put him right here on the screen. Give the e cam a second to think about it. I'm gonna have to go to demo mode so you guys can see what's popping. Okay, and then I'm gonna take Dan and I'm gonna shrink Dan, and then I'm gonna put Dan right there and be like, take that, Mark Keith Braden. That's how you do it. Uh, uh, even better than the tape. You control it, fam. You take the guess, you put it on, you preset the scene because you should always preset your scenes. I don't know why everybody is saying, well, I tried this thing and it was a very important live stream and it didn't work. You didn't pre-call, you didn't pre-game. You just, your important interview with Bishop Donald Oliver and you didn't call him like 15 minutes ahead of time or the day before and be like, okay, B, let's get this figured out. And then you got everything set. Cool. You got your headphones. Yes. I like your light, but can you get a little more light? Can you open the window? Can you move? If you didn't pregame any of that, your fault. That's it. That's it. So that's how you do it, Mark Keith. I think we figured it out. Just take the camera that's supposed to be the person. So hiding right here, guest number four is Dan Pfeiffer of Crooked Media. Oh, my goodness. If I get Dan on this show. And then you basically cover their camera up with a JPEG of whatever it is, their logo, their whatever. Like, that's how you do it, Marquise. I think we got ourselves a winner. I think we got a winner. Yes, we have ourselves a winner. So that is the trick. Now, Marquise, you just gave me a new video idea. For anybody that didn't see this, I got to teach them how to bring on a guest without showing a guest because the guest is shy or ugly or both. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Anyway, that's cool. See, good questions came out of this. Thank you, Marquise, for such a fantastic question. So going back to what we were doing here i'll stay in demo mode so i can show you hey go away uh dan pfeiffer i don't need you right now um what you would want to do now is once you have your camera placements sort of figured out okay let's see boom <laughs> what's up charles good to see you now that you have your camera situation sort of figured out i know what this layout is Right. Again, mine's is off right now because I'm not using the all the way edge because when you set blank camera source, you right now at the moment can't change the color. So probably what you're going to want to do when you set up blank camera source as a back is like throw up a JPEG or something to give yourself sort of a grid. Right. So you can see what you're working with. But I'm just going to move these guys to the all the way edge because I always remember that I have more than just my live safe window. So I got my, my guys in place, so to speak. This goes down here. I got my gap figured out. Almost there, almost there. And what you do now, pull this to the all the way corner. I know what this is. Take on your keyboard, command shift four, hit the space bar. It turns it into a little gray boxy box like such. Shoot it. Take that screenshot, open it up in Keynote, Canva, Photoshop, Illustrator, Easel, Easel. I need to get in contact with Annette McDonald so I can get my Easel game on and play with that. Adobe Spark, uh, uh, with um, Anusha's one, uh, NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA, sorry, NVIDIA is a graphics card. Uh, Envato Elements, place it. Like, there's so, so many. There's so many. Take that shot, bring it into one of those, design your heart's content. But if you want your show to be magnificent, do not just leave it like that. Switch them up, right? Take person number three, move them over there. Person number one, move it over there. And then I got to move myself out of the way for a second because I messed up and put it right there. And then so you want to go and take your guests. Right. So in this particular case, we have five guests. We're going to make five screens, each one where the other person becomes the prominent. Actually, let's go one step further. Let's go one step further. Stop moving my ECAM window, Doc. You're going to take this guy, make him small. 
and then take this guy and put guest three as the prominent speaker and then put this up in here, right? Up in here. I don't know why Bubba Sparks just jumped in my head, but he did. Okay. I know why. Cause I said somebody was ugly. There you go. Okay. So now do it like this, right? So now guest three in this case is Mark Keith. That boom, that works, right? It works. Okay. Now, nah. Marquis always twisting things up, making it hard. I guess I could just number and bring the Zoom audio to Ecamm using loopback. In theory, yes, but uh, using the Zoom conversation into Ecamm versus, say, having a person call you on Google Voice, use system audio from Google Voice, and just bring it in. I would say that the Google Voice would use less resources because it's just a simple browser type thing, right? Running Ecamm and running Zoom at the same time. And yes, I know you bought a brand new computer. You have the same computer as me. You just add in extra unnecessary resources for round about zero reason whatsoever, okay? So two ways that you could do that. You could have a person call you directly from Google Voice and then bring their voice in that way. Simpler would be what we just did using the Ecamm interview feature and then plop a photo on top. Unless you're taking like live calls. And in which case you're taking live calls, just make the graphic say, you know, live call with Marquis Braden and just keep the guest always hitting to the back. When the guest comes in to, I'm pointing to the screen like you can see. When the guest person pops up over here, what you would do is you assign them to uh, guest say four, and that way guest four is always going to be that person. You know what I mean? Regardless of who calls in, they always call in using that link. You leave them assigned as guest four. So something like this real quick. I'm going to just ling a ling a ling myself. Okay. So right here, I'm going to answer, but I'm not going to bring myself on a hey, mute. Stay there. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm listening over here. Hold on. Let me mute this. Boom. That that should work. Uh, mute the tab. Come here. All right. So anyway, what you would do is take this person, assign them as guest four, right? So whoever calls in, you always assign them as guest four, and they're actually hiding back there. They're not really on. You know what I'm saying? And then that's easier. Less resources. I'm going to hang this up in case it was echoing because that was dumb. But you get you get what I'm saying, right? Always assign the call. If you're doing a rapid call show, right? So we are guests uh, one, Markeith, two, me, three, Alicio, four, Marshall, right? Over here, guest five, we got Lemwell. Over here is the person calling in on the phone. So June calls in and be like, okay, ECAM mastermind. I got an ECAM. I'm trying to level up my game. How do I get in where I fit in? And then we would just hide June back there, number one, because he's ugly. It's my brother. I can say that. And, and But he would always be hiding in the back. Okay? Wait, I shouldn't say that about my brother because he might do weird stuff to my office when I'm not here. <laughs> so, so anyway, you could easily, like, set up like that. That's less resources. Like, I get the idea of bringing in the Zoom call. And, yes, it does work that way. But whenever you do this, try to path the leak resistance, right? The least amount of unnecessary stuff you're adding to it, even though the computer can handle it, don't do it. That's easier. What we just did there is easier, in my humble opinion. Or bring it. Sorry, Dan. Anybody told you to move? Stay over there. Stay over there. You got it. the Logitech uh, MX mouse. Super sensitive. You got to be. Don't touch the button. The other trick would be take this phone here. Um. Use the adapter, which is in the bag back there. Plug that in. This is a TRRS cable. Plug it in and then feed the end of it to your mixer. Right? Roadcaster has Bluetooth built in or use this to feed it in. Um, a standard, you know, mixer like, um, like Evo or, you know, even something as old as like a Zoom 4. You would just basically take this. This is the final cable out coming out of the iPhone with a standard issue, headphone to headphone jack or headphone to RCA, whatever you have, and you can bring the call in straight through your mixer. So you don't have to go as crazy as this to bring a call in. You basically need this and the iPhone end adapter, or if you have an Android, you just plug it in the hole because you already have that. 
So, like, you can go mad low tech. This right here is $8. It's called a TRRS to TRS adapter or phone call to line out adapter. Very common. This one's a road one, so this one's like 20 bucks. But if you buy a generic brand, it's not that expensive, right? Um, so use one of these, come out of the phone directly into your mixer. Game recognized game. That would be the even easier way. Okay. <laughs> right? And as uh, June said, you got to preset your presets. What's up, LA? You here? I hope you picked up that Beamer so you can be like me. Yes. Fabnificent. Yes. I always make up my own words. Everyone know watches this stream knows I just come up with crazy stuff. So thank you, Yemi. Good to see you here. Uh, <laughs> oh, virtual elementary school. That's cool. That's cool. So June said, did you get the seven or the eight? Nice. Yes. Aaron, Ecamm is extremely fluid, bro. Like after, after OBS for many, 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 many years, once I switched, I fell in love, bro. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. I like Ecamm is the equivalent of like meeting a girl that could do like Travis Barker lever drum solos, play guitar, cook like running out of style, loves racing, and a big Manchester United fan. That's the equivalent. <laughs> Okay, he said, did about 20 shows just on getting audio apps for both Windows and Mac. For, yes, and uh, good plugins and things like that. The only thing we don't have yet that I will always complain about, but it's not really a complaint, I wish we had is I wish we had true VST plugin capability for the only reason of I want a legit meter. Like, it's not even about adding compression or any of that stuff that can be done off board with a mixer. I want a legit meter. That's it. I'm weird. The boys laugh at me every time I say that. But yes, you can use uh, Microsoft Teams. And it's funny that Microsoft Teams only got NDI now because Microsoft Teams is Skype on steroids. And as you can see from the little window down here, We've been having Skype NDI forever, so it's so weird that they took so long to do that. And everyone's like, what the heck kind of layout is this? You know what? Let's just go back to that. Let's do it like this. I'm going to just keep, I'm gonna keep it weird for a minute because, hey, I can't. Okay. Hey, Caleb, good to see you here. All the Ecamm people are coming in on their own accord, not as Ecamm. <laughs> That's better. And Marquis says it makes logical sense. You know how we do. Oh, yeah. Team allows calls now. That's great. One thing we did run into, uh, Yimmy, with Teams is you had to be very particular about the browser. When we were using Ecamm Virtual Cam in Teams, it had to be Chrome, which is weird because I use Microsoft Edge uh, just because right now it's the fastest browser in the game until maybe uh, the new Safari comes out in three weeks. So I, I always use Edge because I just really love how quick it is. But it does not like the virtual camera and Ecamm on certain pages, which is weird. Like, it won't work in the this Ecamm, uh, you know, the one that I just showed you. But in Google, like Hangouts, a la meet, it doesn't work. But in Messenger, it does. It's like, so it's, yo, it's strange. So Chrome and Teams work perfectly fine for that, as far as I remember. But... If in doubt, check the group because a lot of people use Teams in the group. So, yes, that's very cool. I, I do like the fact that Teams allows calls now. That's kind of cool. Hello, Kathy. Good to see you here. K-Walk Comedy in the building. Always catch me live. I think that's because it, it's the timing, like, because you're in the East Coast, right? You just catch me perfectly at 2 p.m. So it means you just got finished eating and you're probably ready to take a nap. <laughs> I'm joking. I shouldn't try to crack jokes with a comedy professional. <laughs> so so that's it. Uh, broke or broker, pre-owned only. There you go. There you go. No, just get a lease, fam. Trust me. Get the lease. You got the business, get the lease. That's how it's done. Yes, the, the, the virtual cam situation is quite amazing. Right. Um, I've used it in I've tested it in a bunch of stuff. I tested it in blue jeans. I tested it in meet zoom, go to a uh, meeting. Uh, there's a lot of talk in the community about webinar oriented stuff. I haven't really messed with that yet. But one of the dope things for webinar right now 
if, if I was going to do a webinar right now, I would probably go Vimeo Pro. Um, it is not cheap. That's not how Vimeo rolls, but it's kind of nice, nice, nice. Let's go here. Vimeo Premium is the answer. I don't know why I called it Pro, but if you scrolly, scrolly down the bottom with the list, they have unlimited live streaming. Now, what's cool about this is, yes, it's 75 bucks a month, but if you're doing webinars and with everybody on the webinar, you're not collecting at least 75 bucks, you probably shouldn't be doing webinars. There's a different route you should go. Um, but what happens here is you can hide the content for the webinar behind the paywall. And the paywall link isn't shareable because I think it's IP attached. So if I were to say buy one of Mark Keith's training situations and I've invested, you know, the five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred, knowing Mark Keith, the five grand <laughs> for the class, then I couldn't take that and it'd be like, yo, LA, check it out. I got Mark Keith's class link. Take it. Because when he tries to log in, it'll be like, no, thou shalt not pass. It's tied to my IP or my MAC address or something of that nature. So right now, I know everyone's doing Zoom webinars, some of these other things which are glitchy. I think personally for the moment, hot news in the game, Vimeo Premium. It is 75 bucks, but you can put that content behind the paywall. So there's that. And all of these folks use it. I don't know if these really matter, but that, that does come up a lot. So back to my random strange screen. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. It was it, They did have the VS plugins. I, I, I would say VST3 or AU. I will accept either. I think AU is a better load on our system just because, well, it's how Apple does their audio units. So that's good. Uh, VMix has ASIO and VST. Yes. Uh, yes, I am using the latest version of Edge, dude. It's just weird, man. If I, and what and the funny thing is, back when I made the video, which is on my YouTube, talking about how to use, because, you know, Zoom had broke virtual cam, Edge was the browser, and it worked. And then Microsoft, being Microsoft, they did something. <laughs> yeah. I find that funny too, right? That Teams works better in Chrome than Edge. Here's why this is weird, Yemi. Chrome, I mean, Edge is Chrome. It's a Chromium browser. Like, they just basically took Chrome and they went like that. Let me get that. And they just polished it up and made it slightly better. So why Google is slipping with Chrome, I have no idea. Firefox is a better Chromium browser. Edge is a better Chromium browser. Brave is a better Chromium browser. Tor better Chromium browser. So like they got all these browsers that are basically Chrome doing better than Chrome. I am confused. We don't know why that works. Sam. Oh, the social hotelier. I love that word. Thank you. From Helsinki. Nice. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That is so cool. If you have any questions, Sam, let me know. LA says he drives too much for a lease and stop driving, player. Get a helicopter. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, gang. Here's what's going to happen. I think we got it kind of sort of covered how to do your layouts. Again, if you want to see like very specific layouts or you want to do like a challenge, DM me a picture, a screenshot of a show. And be like, all right, smart Alec, let's see how close we can duplicate that show. Like, um, like maybe PTI is easy. Bradley covered PTI. That's part of the interruption for those people who don't watch ESPN. Um, but yeah, if you see something you're like, yo, I want to do something similar to that, we can do that. Uh, one day we do have to do, uh, like how to do zoom with all of this stuff. Cause everybody still loves zoom. I don't know why I really hate that program. Um, but the, the problem with the zoom way is I have to have at least three guests in order to show you how to set it up. It doesn't really work with dummy guests. Um, it's, well, it's harder. It can be done, but it's a lot more challenging. Um, so yeah, when I, I am going to tighten this one up quick though, for the simple reason that I actually have a call. One of the Ecamm members like just jumped in yesterday before the price changed 
And it's like, okay, I got this thing I need to do, and I need to do it next month, and I have very, very particular stuff, and I don't want to read, so I'm just going to hire you to walk me through how to do it, and I'm going to take private lessons. So, yeah, today I'm going to cut the stream short because I have to go teach somebody how to become Ecamm famous in, in like, a two-hour session. So it works. It can be done. It can be done. Because uh, it's that easy of a program. Like, it is super easy but powerful. And that's what that's what makes all of us love it so much. And again, I was I was talking to Katie yesterday. Hey, Katie. Oh, oh you want a challenge? Yeah, that would be dope. Like, I want to see like shows that are hard to do. And let's see if we can recreate them using our camera overlays and whatnot. Uh, I think it would be really, really fun. But yeah, our challenge is definitely um our, I mean, sorry, our win is our community is so good. Like watching everybody yesterday jump on the streams and helping each other out and answering all the questions and trying to tell everybody, yo, this GoPro right now, like do your thing. Let's get it. Like watching everyone work together and help solve problems to me is one of the dopest, dopest, dopest parts about the Ecamm fam. The e Camille, as I call them again, I make up words. If you watch my stream, you know 100% I make up words. So e Camille is also one of my made up words. But yes, the e Camille is dope. So that being said, I want to make a quick reminder to you. First of all, um, let me do this last last comment for today. Host virtual lunch uh, at my job on Ecamm has been a huge success. Thank you for the awesome guiding and advice. I love the app and this channel. Yo, absolutely, absolutely appreciate you. And then Sam says, um, Ecamm user for the past two years. I love interview mode. Use iPhone and Filmy Pro. Yes, I keep telling folks that it's the secret sauce. It is the secret sauce. It is so beautiful. Sam, you know what I tried to do? I tried to put Filmy Pro with my Omni, I mean, uh, Osmo Mobile so that the Osmo Mogul would follow me around, but for whatever reason, the NDI would not allow it to work at the same time as the Osmo Mobile control is. So hopefully that gets updated and works. It'd be really cool whenever you move, the camera could actually follow you. I thought that was great. Anyway, twice a week, fam. We are here Tuesdays and Saturdays. It's 8 a.m. Hawaiian, 11 a.m. Pacific, and 2 p.m. E. DT, that's going to change next week. So Saturday will be the last show with this. That will change. Both of these will switch. And then same with the British time. That will switch on Sunday. So Saturday will be the last time you see this. But you guys got the general. When when you guys move clocks, just adjust accordingly. You know, that's it. And we're here. And again, I really, really appreciate you guys for being here. It's been nice. Uh, it's been fun. Don't forget all of this here. What we did today is done using the old Ecamm Live. So make sure you grab yourself some Ecamm and get some love that way. Um, if, wait, that was for that was for something else. If you'd like to check out TubeBuddy in order to get your YouTube situation popping, go and use this link right here. Check out TubeBuddy. Been using that a lot. If you'd like to support the stream, this is how. You go to docrock.live slash Patreon, jump on, and I would appreciate any one of you guys that want to Join in and be a part of the Patreon family. And yeah, don't forget, if you want to do your Ecamm, I have to reassemble my Ecamm screen because I busted it all up just for David. <laughs> because, because David asked me to, and I thought I created a new scene, but I didn't. I did it the dumb way. So anyway, let's put all this back like I had it. Zoom my head back to where it goes, and then come all the way down here to the bottom, and bam! Put on the Ecamm flavor. There we go. There you go. That is the answer. If you want to check out Ecamm, please use the link below. It is docrock.live slash Ecamm. If you haven't already jumped in, jump in. So, yes. David, thank you for the good question. I know the only reason why David comes to my streams is because my color is purple and he's a Vikings fan. He tried to act like he's learning something, but he's just here to stare at purple things for an hour or two, <laughs> a couple of times a week. <laughs> nah, David, I appreciate you, fam. Thank you for always being here, and thank you for being a great member of our community. Like, again, our community is so dope. Like, I just, I can't wait until we have Ecamm Con somewhere in Massachusetts during Red Sox season, I hope. And then we just all meet up and then go hang out with Katie and Caleb and the twins. And then after I go to Fenway Park, cause I'm a Red Sox nation, you know, I'll take Celtics games too. I love Celtics, you know? So 
Can we have Ecam Con? Katie, set it up. <laughs> Pick a date and time. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, I got to go. My client is waiting for me. I will see you guys next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Let's uh, outro music. Aloha, fam. Love you.